Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to test a starter solenoid. This is a fairly typical starter solenoid. It's a Lucas solenoid from a old Ford Capri. These sort of solenoids were used right up until maybe 10 or 15 years ago until starter motors came with a built-in solenoid in them. So the two big terminals on the solenoid are for the battery lead directly from the battery and then the lead that goes directly to the starter motor. We have a couple of other connections. We generally have a small spade connector and that's used for the power that comes directly from your key switch and it's used to energize the solenoid. So that's our 12 volts in. Our earth or neutral is supplied through the body of the car and it's grounded from the chassis to the body of the solenoid. On this solenoid we have a third lug which is used to provide 12 volts to the ignition coil during starting. These older cars run a 9 volt ballast ignition system so they need 12 volts generally when starting to get a good enough spark to get things going. First thing we're going to check is that the solenoid isn't stuck open. So we're going to put our meter onto ohms or resistance range and test between the two main terminals, nothing at all, that's as it should be. And then we're going to test the resistance of the solenoid coil itself. So we're going to go between the spade terminal and anywhere on the body. Here we're getting 3 ohms, which is a good reading. Anything low ohms like that means there's continuity in the coil. So next we're going to energize it with 12 volts and we should hear it engaging. So we have the body of our solenoid earthed and we have our 12 volts in the red crocodile clip. I'm going to attach to the spade and we should hear the solenoid click as the coil energizes. So that sounds good like it normally should. We are going to test it on the meter with the solenoid engaged. So testing continuity resistance between the two terminals. There should be continuity across these two now and we are getting absolutely nothing. So that definitely means our solenoid is bad. Most likely the contact inside has fouled or is worn out. So to fully check that we're actually going to open it up and have a look. So we can now pry off the cover. And we can see the coil. The top wire on the coil is soldered onto this little plate which contacts our metal body of the solenoid. So that's where it gets its earth from. The other wire, other end of the coil is connected to our tab here for starting. So we're going to have to break that wire. There we go. That's our coil out. Here we have our plunger and our turn spring. An o-ring. So the plunger actually pulls towards us when we energize the coil. And these are the two pads on the bottom of our binding posts. So to take this apart fully, we'll need to take off the nuts. So after a little bit of work, these two are actually glued in. We have it all apart. And we can see that our problem is that there is corrosion just from water ingress by the look of it from sitting over time on the contacts of one of the terminals and also on one side of the contact point on the plunger. 
Here's the top of the two binding posts. We can see how badly one is corroded. The other one is reasonable. Then looking at the plunger of the solenoid, we can see we have a bit of damage on one side. The other side isn't as badly worn, but there's definitely been some sparking going on for a while here. So there we go, that's what the inside of a starter solenoid looks like. There are very simple devices. Generally either the coil goes or the contacts go inside. So hopefully that was of some use to you. Alright, thanks, bye bye.